fabulous author once again here at the Westin. We just finished the Domestic Violence Awareness Conference, uh, Domestic Violence in the Workplace, and it was a fabulous uh, conference. Uh, you will see it aired on the Select USA TVI network. But before we go into that, introduce, your, introduce yourself and tell them a little bit about how this conference was, was today. Hi, I'm Alona Jernigan of Dream to Destiny Enterprises, and I was just honored and humbled to be here with Sisters Empowerment Network with it being Domestic Violence Month and learning so much about domestic violence and the different forms that it comes in. I think their theme was faces and shades of domestic violence, and it gave a challenge of how people in the workplace can respond to it. And you would be amazed at the number of statistics that they shared with us about how this impacts so many people. So the event was wonderful. I want to give a shout out to Vita Brown, founder of Sisters Empowerment Network, for presenting an awesome, awesome activity this morning. By the way, we streamed it today live, so make sure I get your contact information. So those of you that want to know more about this particular presentation that was today, uh, you can inquire uh, of us and we'll send you that link free of charge. But it's worth noting that a lot of, so much information was disseminated today that I didn't know that it would be worth having a digital record so that people uh, who, that our eyes, the stigma can be erased and our eyes can be open because the only way we can solve something, we gotta face it first. Uh, but that being said, uh, we're celebrating um, Miss Lorna today today because she is a minister it seems like a motivational inspirational speaker but you know what I get excited about is an author a professor told me once in college that uh, the brain doesn't take you seriously till you write it down okay all right and then he, I think he said also that 75 percent 50 to 75 percent of what we write down of whatever we want to remember if we write it down we have a higher chance of remembering that and so when I see that someone's committed to the process of writing a book, I know that they're saying, hey, I want this to go on record as to what I believe about this topic. And so we have the pursuit. Tell them a little bit about the name of the book. I'm going to hold it up as I always like to do and uh, and why you wrote it. OK, well, the name of the book is The Pursuit of Destiny, Making Yes, I Can a Personal Reality. And it's basically my life story. I'm born and raised in Atlanta. I've been writing since I was five. Uh, began, began to be an entrepreneur after having a very nice career in the nonprofit community sector. I uh, worked in academia, worked with other entrepreneurs, but I wanted more. started a Christian magazine called Imani. Uh, it went well from 1997 to 2004, but when I could no longer publish it, I went into somewhat of a depression. I felt like a failure because the magazine was given to me as a vision from God, but when I couldn't continue, even though I published for seven years, got a letter of commendation from the White House, received the Alumni Achievement Award from Spelman. Hold on and tell us about that magazine. Okay. <laughs> I'm on a roll. <laughs> okay. Well, the magazine was called Imani, uh, the magazine of faith, family, and empowerment. and. As a journalist, God told me to begin the magazine as an ambassador to tell people what's going on in the body of Christ because everybody is not going to go to church. And we see even recently with all the scandals in the church, so many people have lost hope in the church. So the ma magazine was a ministry tool to reach out to people whether they went to church or not, to highlight what was going on in the body of Christ and to witness to people at the same time. I was married at the time and when I couldn't continue the publication, I felt like a failure because this was something that God spoke to me and even though we published for seven years when I could not continue I felt like a failure went into somewhat of a depression and God asked me how long was I gonna stay in the pity party he told me you need to either use the gift that I've given you or I'm going to take it and I didn't want him to take it I had been writing since I was five I began to, to, to ease out of the pity party and when I did that I began to receive opportunities to do writing for who's who in black Atlanta I started out this is who's who who, who's Who is a, is a uh, chronological 
uh, type publication that highlights the achievements of African Americans. It's in it's in, it's in Atlanta, but it's also in 18 or 19 other markets. Uh, published by Who's Who Publishing Company out of Ohio. Uh, when I started working with Who's Who, I started doing just the 180 word bios, and then they asked me one year to write six out of 35. Uh, feature articles and the next year they asked me to write all of the feature articles and that ended up being about 60 articles this is an article that I wrote they are two page spreads on some of the uh, most influential people most powerful people in Atlanta and when I did that at first, uh, I found out about an opportunity to receive an award from the Electronic Urban Report out of California with Lee Bailey and I put our package in, I put our application in to receive the nomination, but it was not accepted because I missed the deadline by one day. One of the people that I had written on was Attorney General Paul Howard, and I had asked him to write something stating what he thought about my writing. I had no idea that he was going to put it in the mail. He wrote a letter and put it in the mail, and wow, they accepted that letter as my nomination. But when I looked at the list of people that I was nominated with, there was the name of Susan Taylor of Essence Magazine and Zane, the romance novelist. And I was saying, wow, God, you put me in a category with Zane and Susan Taylor. And I laugh about this all the time because people say, well, who won? I'm like, child, you know Susan Taylor won. <laughs> but the fact that I was nominated in the same category because, see, the Bible says your gift will make room for you. It'll put you before great men. And I was at my lowest point when I could not finish the magazine, but when I ended that pity party, that's when God began to open doors. He took me from writing six out of 35 feature articles to, to almost 60 out of 60 articles in a book. Mm -hmm. like, Michael, Michael Thurman, and Michael Thurman at the time was the, the, the commissioner of labor for the state of Georgia. I've interviewed uh, Willie Watkins, who is owner of Watkins Funeral Home. Uh, I've written on the Bronner Brothers. I've had an opportunity. This is, this is you are a bona fide by the grace of God, by the grace of God. Uh, Zernona Clayton is one of the people I've had an opportunity to write on. Uh, Tommy Dorch, uh, George Andrews, James Young of, of um, Citizens Trust Bank. I've just been blessed, and I don't take any credit for myself. I owe all the credit and the praise to God because he's the one that opened those doors. But what he spoke to me, and the reason why I wrote the book, is that if you will fall down. Life is going to cause some, some things to happen to where you will fall. Have your pity party if you must, but don't stay there. If I had stayed there, I would have never received the opportunity to do the writing. And, and, and that was all I needed to pick me up and take me further into my destiny where God wanted me to be. Let's talk about the writing for a minute because it sounds to me like you've used writing also as leisure therapy as well as therapy. How has writing helped you design or reveal or reveal your destiny because it sounds like to me that not only are you a bona fide writer but it it does something for you to you and through you okay well for me I am an encourager and God allows me to use my gift of writing to encourage whether I'm writing something for someone or whether I'm writing to speak uh, I'm asked all the time, can you write, I've got to be on a program, can you write my remarks for me? Because I, I kind of know what I want to say, but I want to make sure it flows. So I'm able to help in that way. It is therapeutic. I don't do a whole lot of creative writing just in my leisure. I'm, I, I Give me a concept and a topic and I can write on it. And it, it's therapeutic in that it, I know I'm bringing out the best in somebody else because I'm one of those people that believes there's some good in everybody and nobody's going to know it until you tell them. But the problem is that people, a lot of times, if you if you feel like you're going to uh, write or say something about yourself, they say, oh, I'm bragging. Well, if you don't tell anybody, they won't know. So you have to be able to, to sing loud and proud who you are and tell them what you're doing. When you go into business, you have to, quote, unquote, sell yourself. You got to sell your product and your service. But the first point of contact is you. You. So you've got to be able to say something good about yourself. And if you can't say anything good about yourself, sit down with somebody that believes in you that can help pull it out and then write it and put it into writing. And that's what I do. Interview, but you can go ahead on the finish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm never short on words.
Okay. Where this book is available. Okay, The Pursuit of Destiny is a self-published work, and you can find it online at The Pursuit of Destiny.com. The, the Pursuit of Destiny.com. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, the empowerment is uh, called the Essential Series Wisdom Nuggets for Victorious Living. And this is just a compilation of experiences that I've had over my 20 years as a professional in the communications arena. It's five different modules. The CD that you're holding is called Discovering the, D the Diva Within. It's a CD. Eventually, we're going to move to DVDs, but right now, everything is audio. But I am an encourager, and I work to encourage and empower individuals and organizations to get from where they are to where they desire to be. We said everyone has something in their toolbox that they can use now. Within my within the arm's reach, I have something in my life, someone in my circle, right here, right now, that can advance me forward. And I also have people around me, and I have things in my life and things in my own personality that serve as distractions and obstacles that will stop me from advancing. Whatever the case may be, take inventory, write it down. Hey.